Hi, my name is Artie Laharde. Uh, I was born in New York City. I'm the child of Artemio Laharde Jr. and Maria Teresa Laharde. They're from the Philippines. My dad moved to America when he was like 14 years old. Um, well, my testimony, my parents weren't really religious. <clears throat> my dad wasn't religious. My mom grew up in the Catholic Church, but at that point she did all sorts of religions. She was into Eastern religions, uh, Wicca, but she wasn't really a religious person. Uh, however, my grandmother was religious and she would go to church but anyway, yeah, so how did I come to know the Lord? <clears throat> um, I grew up in New York City, like I said, a story of Queens uh, represent. And uh, yeah, like I didn't, I never had, I never had a good family life. My mom and dad, as far as I knew, as long as I remember, they always fought and argued. And that was kind of normal for me. And. Uh, my testimony starts when my dad actually left our family and he moved to San Diego, California. So he left and I don't remember how long he was gone, but eventually um, my family decided to move to San Diego with him. So it was me, my sister Antonella and Ariel <clears throat> and my grandparents uh, from my dad's side. So they packed up all their bags, they moved to San Diego and I went with them. Uh, when we were there, my grandma, because she was religious, we went to all kinds of different churches. Uh, I remember going to uh, a church where there would be a parade for kids, and it was a Pentecostal church, and they gave like um, those, those like ribbons, and there were tambourines, and yeah, I thought that was a cool church. And we'd go to all, we had a Methodist church that we'd have in Mission Valley. And if you are from San Diego, when you pass by Mission Valley, you always see this church in the hill. We would go there. Um, but I didn't really learn much about God. I'd hear stories about Him. Um, but one one day, we went, we visited a church in Chula Vista. And it was Pastor Larry Obero. At, at the time, it was called Filipino American Bible Baptist Church. And uh, we heard, and he was a crazy guy. He was preaching about hell. And I went with my niece, who was older than me, and she was just saying, why, why, why was he so mad? Why is he preaching on hell? And I just kind of went along with it. I wasn't really paying attention. All I remember is I was good that day, and my grandma gave me a dollar for behaving. But anyway, Pastor Larry Obero told us that there was a church planner uh, where we were at in Mira Mesa. And it was actually just one block away from where we lived. So we started going to Mira Mesa Bible Baptist Mission with Pastor Willie Dell. And he was from that church. He was a Sunday school teacher who got a call from God. And he he moved to Mira Mesa, which was north. Chula Vista is pretty much as south as you can get in San Diego. He moved up north and he started that mission with, um, with other people. And we went and he took a lot of a lot of his Sunday school lived in Mira Mesa, so that's where I first heard the gospel. I was nine years old, and now I'm gonna backtrack. So, <clears throat> um, growing up in a family where it was dysfunctional, uh, I never knew any different. So I wasn't really sad one way about it or or whatever because I just always grew up. They were always fighting, and um, but. But even my dad leaving, I didn't really understand it. I was like really young at the time. I just knew he wasn't there. And um, after moving to San Diego, I was just kind of like a bitter child. I didn't know why, I didn't know what. Probably I haven't even thought about it even to this day. Um, but it was, as a kid, if I like really think back about it, it was, it was kind of like a, a sad part. I like, really had no hope. Um, I don't think about this often, but I even remember as like a young kid just wanting to not live anymore. And life, this was before I heard about Jesus Christ and I had no hope in my life and I was mad and angry and bitter and I was young. I was young. Um, but 
I heard about this church and I heard about Jesus and I heard that I have a place in heaven that I can go to heaven because of Jesus and when I was nine I heard the gospel and I even prayed the prayer but I didn't become a Christian at that time but even though I didn't really become born again something happened in me is that I had hope in my life and uh, sometimes I forget that being so far away from it but my life without Jesus there was no hope and then I heard about it from a Sunday school teacher and God gave me hope from that point in my life even though I wasn't a Christian and um, I, I because I prayed the prayer people would say I was a believer but as I grew older, there was a time where pe my family couldn't force me to go to church anymore. I was too big for that. And they didn't force me to go to church. And I was just like any other teenager um, doing ratchet teenager things. And, and yeah, that's just how it was. Um, but when I was 15 years old, our church had a revival meeting with evangelist Dave McCracken and he came they invited me and i wanted to go to church so the funny thing with me is every time i would go to church it would be because there was a potluck <laughs> or there's there's an event there's a church anniversary there's food and i'd go and uh, i would always feel weird about it because uh, it seemed like i was just going because there was food um but this was actually a time i wanted to go to church for whatever reason i have no idea why and they invited me and um, there was pizza that night, but I didn't care. I actually wanted to go to church um, Because even though I prayed this prayer, I wasn't a Christian and I had a lot of doubts in my life I would always pray this prayer uh, God if I'm not saved save me right now, but I would never have peace about it um, But I would always just say hey you prayed that prayer. You're good um, But I went to, I went to church um, When I was 15, I don't know exactly remember when it was probably January and I heard the gospel and I was thinking about eternal things. <clears throat> but that day ended and stopped going to church. Uh, I lived my life, I continued doing what I always did, uh, living life with my friends and um, God saved me from a lot of things but I just wasn't a Christian. And then the next year I wanted to go to church again. For what reason, who knows? Um, but I wanted to go and it was, it was this revival week again this was January of 2004 and uh, I, I went and uh, Dave McCracken again was preaching and he gave a testimony of Pastor Larry Obero's wife um, Tita Mirna and she got saved the week before and she was someone who was in the ministry for I don't know 20 plus years and she fooled herself into thinking she was a Christian and the Holy Spirit really began to work in me because here was a lady who on the outside looked like a good person but she was an unbeliever at heart and God convicted me because if she could fool herself I thought why do I think I'm a Christian because I don't even look good on the outside and the Lord showed me that I don't look like any Christian that I knew um, I was like the worst guy in my group but for some reason I thought I was a Christian because I prayed a prayer and I went up to my sister Antonella that night and she we was in the kitchen and she was cooking our classic meal of cut up hot dogs she was frying in the saute pan with ketchup and sriracha and I, I, I said Antonella I don't I don't think I'm saved and she was like oh no 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 you're, you're, you're saved but the Holy Spirit was convicting me and I went to my grandma's room and this is the prayer I prayed uh, God I'm going to hell save me and that's when I was born again uh, so I talked to Antonella and she was like hey what you need is you need to get reassurance uh, this was January 11 when I accepted Christ January 12th my sister went with me to get assurance and uh, we both talked and I prayed again with a pastor but for some reason um, I just felt I, it, I just felt like it was another prayer, but my sister uh, accepted Jesus Christ as her personal savior that day, and uh, that's when I was born again, um, January 11, 2004. My sister got saved January 12, 2004, 
and um, it was because there was a just a regular guy who worked for the police department in the CSI department who was a faithful Sunday school teacher who God called and he followed that call and he was still in the police department but but he planted that church and that's why I'm a believer today um, but my journey didn't start there there was someone really important in my life and we would call him brother Ed and brother Ed at that time he was 28 29 years old uh, from the Philippines uh, but moved to San Diego and uh, he just invested in me uh, he he gave his life for for, for me and and the and and the the youth in Mira Mesa, <clears throat> and uh, a couple times a week he would drive all the way from National City to Mira Mesa, which is like a 30-minute drive, and they take us to Bible studies, they take us soul winning, they take us to church. Um, he'd feed us, and uh, he's the reason why I, I got involved, and I was heavily in the world and. God was taking things out of my life, even music I'd listen to, my friends. Um, I did, I just didn't have any desire to go to parties anymore, to uh, to chase girls and everything I used to do. I just wanted to live for the Lord. I wanted to read my Bible. I wanted to know who God is, and um, Brother Ed was instrumental in that. And uh, we decided that summer. I think it was that summer, it was the summer of 2005, where we went to youth conference at North Valley Baptist Church. And it was, uh, the theme was Commission for the Kingdom. And there was one night, man, they had the longest invitation. <laughs> it just kept on going and going. And people were giving their lives to the Lord. And I didn't really understand. I, All I understood was that God wanted me to surrender my life. and. Um, I didn't because I don't know why just why any teen wouldn't want to go up in front of a church of thousands of people um, but I would just see people go and go and one of the, the other youth groups from a local church that like we were friends with their teens were coming up and I just went up and I remember praying with the guy his name is brother Kyle Conley and uh, Noelle Neptune's pastor <coughs> Uh, but at the time he was a college student, he prayed with me and I surrendered my life and this this burden fell off. And I didn't know it at the time, but I just kind of knew ever since I got saved, God wanted me to be uh, a preacher. And uh, yeah, God called me, fast forward to where I am now, I went away from the Lord. That's another story, but my sister went to West Coast Baptist College. And she was just a punk um, when when I was trying to live for the Lord she was rebellious and I saw the change in her and I determined to go away from the Lord I determined when I was going away from the Lord I, this is what I said I said I took a class called philosophy of ethics because I wanted to live a life without God a good life without God and I remember going to that class and the longer I stayed, the, the more I realized that it, nothing makes sense. Morality and ethics don't make sense without God. And and God wouldn't let me, even though I purposed in my heart to get away from Him, He just, I couldn't get away from Him. Um, he called me. Um, I knew God wanted me a preacher in 2012. Um, I was on my way back to Bible college. Uh, that's where all my... That's where God guided me. And this is my testimony there. Um, getting away from the Lord, I picked up so many bad things, so many sins from, from the world. And that was like the process of God teaching me to become a man again, teaching, teaching me to be uh, someone that could be fit for His service. And God did so many amazing things in my life at West Coast Baptist College. Um, I got to see my sister graduate her super senior year um, and God taught me, God gave me a heart for church planning, um, to be a church planner and I wanted to do what Paul did and God gave men like Pastor Brian Sams 
who taught me how to love the Word of God and to be faithful to the Word of God and to preach the Word of God. Um, God gave me people like Dr. Shetler who, who taught me to love the Word and Dr. Getch who, who, taught, who taught me how to preach and how to love truth and Pastor Chapel how to, to live for the ministry. And God shaped me and um, fast forward, here I am in Israel, summer 2018, graduated Bible college. I don't know what exactly God has for me yet, but um, I'm excited and uh, yeah, that's my testimony. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this has encouraged you in some way. This is one of a part series called Get Them Testimonials Out. As Christians, God has given each one of us a story to tell. He did not give us a story to just keep for ourselves. He gave us a story and a testimony so we can share others, so we can encourage others and that others can learn from our mistakes, from the things that we have gone through. Almost everyone is on media, and if we can put more stuff on media that matters, we can make a difference. And you can make a difference too. Do you want to share your testimony? Or do, would you like to help us make these short testimonial videos to encourage others? Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has encouraged you and blessed you in some way.